What is up, Wildlings? Colin Stuckert here, the Wild CEO. How much fish oil should you take? Should I take? Well, that depends. Now, obviously, there is the recommended dose that there are certain labeling restrictions and laws around what we can suggest or recommend or say is safe. Uh, I'll just talk personally about how I think about fish oil, especially our wild fish oil, which is a whole body, completely natural, cold processed fish oil that is Friends of the Sea certified, one of the highest quality fish oils on the planet that doesn't disrupt fragile aquatic ecosystems. These men hidden fish off the coast of Reedsville, Virginia in uh, this specific case. So fish oil is, in my opinion, like the good stuff. Think of it like eating fish, except you don't actually have the heavy metal concern. So that's why I take it daily. I want as many of those omega threes as possible to help balance out my six to three ratio, which is going to then help uh, be anti-inflammatory and help just promote general health and weight loss and appetite suppression, all the amazing things that it does. But if I'm eating fish every week, they say the recommended limit is like three to four servings a week. And of course, depends on the type of fish. If you have larger predator fish that eat smaller fish, you have more heavy metals that kind of uh, get into the, the fat and into the body of the larger fish because they're around longer, they live longer. Whereas the smaller fatty fish, like the menhaden, for example, which are these very small fatty fish, you're less likely to have heavy metal concerns because they're not in the water long enough and they're not eating other fish. So if you're eating fish like salmon or the bigger predator fish like tuna, swordfish, you have to keep in mind what the heavy metal content could be, right? And you have to kind of modulate how much fish you're eating. Because there's a distillation, molecular distillation process for the wild fish oil, you don't actually have to worry about that because the heavy metals are removed through that process. And what's left is that pure, beautiful omega-3 fat. So how much should you take? Well, I've done experiments where I've taken as many as 40 caps a day. I'm not recommending you do that, okay? I did this as an experiment. I wanted to see how I felt. I wanted to see how it improved my health. And I felt good. No negative side effects. Uh, no burps, fish burps or any of that, because of course, wild fish is super clean. And I don't think I need to take them that, that much, but it was a interesting experiment. I've heard of other people that have done the same. It's hard to set a dose here because like what's on the label and what's required by law, you know, and then you think about how much you would actually eat if you ate like salmon, for example, you start seeing that they're kind of in different categories, right? You might eat 10 grams of omega-3, let's say, in like a huge piece of salmon. And I'm guessing, I don't know if that's the actual number. It might be more than that, it might be a little less. Whereas if you take 10 grams of fish oil from caps, it's gonna be well above the recommended dose. You see what I'm saying? They're very similar, but they're also different. Obviously one's a food, there's less restrictions there and less regulations. One's a supplement, there's more stuff you have to do and whatever, okay? So you have to understand these different parameters and then decide what's best for you. And then also experiment for yourself, okay? So what we recommend everyone is that asks about how much wild fish oil they should take. We recommend about two to three caps per meal up to two to three times a day. If you're doing the oil, it's one teaspoon. So you could do like one to three teaspoons a day. You can have it with the meal. Uh, you can sometimes have it on empty stomach. You gotta kind of test. It depends on your gut health and things like that. But I like taking it with a meal just to make sure that my gut acid doesn't do anything tricky or eat up, you know, anything and, you know, so one to three times a day, uh, about one to three grams a day, depending on uh, which one you're taking. So the caps are a lower dosage and you have to get do, you'd have to take more caps to get one full gram. So a thousand milligrams of omega-3, whereas the oil itself is very, very pure. So it's a higher level of pure omega-3 and something you got to keep in mind. So anytime you're looking at a fish oil supplement, if the capsule itself is a gel cap, for example, and it says that it's a thousand milligrams, well, you're not getting a thousand milligrams of omega-3. You're likely only getting between 80 to 200 because it's a small percent of uh, the gel cap, which is inside the gel cap. And the gel cap itself is an hour later to protect the oil inside, right? Whereas the pure oil isn't in a gel cap. So it's a much more potent form of omega-3 because it's just already in oil form and I drink it, right? Or a teaspoon. So a couple studies here. Uh, most organizations, and again, we'll go back to like the standard, right? Which is something you should take into account and then figure it out for yourself. And of course, consult your doctor and come up with a strategy and a dosage and then test for yourself. 
but most organizations suggest that anywhere from 250 to 500 milligrams of fish oil can improve overall health, all right? But like we have here, there's not a lot of consensus around this, right? It's, it's really hard to define this. Uh, so if you have certain conditions like diabetes or depression, doctors recommend even higher levels of fish oil intake, even higher. I'm gonna need to fix that sentence. Uh, so some studies have shown that people took an average of 100, 850 milligrams worth of supplement salt and almost 25% drop in heart attacks. Yes, I need to edit this article. There's a few things in here. Other research suggests that individuals can minimize the symptoms of anxiety and depression through omega-3 supplements. And then the recommended dosage in those studies were between 200 and 2,000 or 2,200 milligrams each day. So again, there's a wide gap here. And what you want to do is you want to understand all the different parameters and then kind of converge on what you think is the most. So the FDA, for example, says you should not exceed 3,000 milligrams of omega-3 supplements each day unless you fall into one of the unique categories above. The EFSA, the European Food Safety Authority, increases the upper daily limit to 5,000 milligrams. So I'm definitely more along the lines of this, in my opinion. And maybe you take the FDA and then you take this and you put it somewhere in between. And again, consult your doctor for what's best. Now, before I let you go, a couple benefits of fish oil. So heart health, obviously. Mood boosting, right? Which reduce inflammation, uh, increase just the way your body works, right? Like, so omega-3, omega-6, these are very complex processes in the body, body that account for many processes. And we we honestly don't know all the different things that could do or couldn't do, but there are strong correlative factors that go into showing that high omega-6 in the diet, a la the standard American diet, and low omega-3 is very pro-inflammatory and you're more susceptible to all modern disease if you fall into that category. Now, there's other factors at, at play here because people that have a high omega-6 in their diet are eating more processed food, right? They're likely smoking. They're probably not very active. Whereas people that have more omega-3 in their diet, they're eating more seafood, uh, more sardines, things like that. And so they're going to probably naturally be more health conscious and maybe they're, uh, they're not smoking. Maybe they're doing yoga a couple times a week, working out. This is also known as the healthy user bias. So these are all things that we have to kind of factor in. I like to boil things down to simplicity, all right? I know that in our modern food environment, there's a ton of omega-6 everywhere, right? Almost every single thing in a package has omega-6, whereas omega-3 are those things you usually find in wild-caught fatty seafood, fatty fish, right, in shellfish, and in healthy animals like grass-fed beef. Processed food, seed oil-based, full of omega-6, lacking tremendously in omega-3 natural whole real foods that you have to prepare and that go bad, way more omega-3, and there are omega-6, of course, but the, the ratio is way closer to a one-to-one. -one. What we're trying to achieve is what we found in nature. We want a one-to-one, -one, all right? So our ancestors probably ate a one-to-one -one of omega-6 to omega-3 in the natural wild environment when they were out hunting, gathering, doing whatever. And our modern industrialized food system, which is based on coarse soy, coarse, corn, soy, and Soy and, soy and wheat, right? The basis of the standard industrialized food supply is all omega-6 rich foods. When you go into the store, even if it's a Whole Foods, don't be fooled by the Whole Foods name. The stuff that you see in a package is almost always going to be predominant, predominantly omega-6, right? Because they use canola oil or safflower oil or soy or oil or any of these other bad oils that are all omega-6 rich. And even the better like gluten-free stuff usually has this in there. You're just not going to get the omega-3s and you're not going to find that one-to-one -one balance that is natural to our species when you're eating out of a package. And of course, most people don't like seafood. Most people don't crack open a can of sardines. They think you're a little crazy if you do that, but that's where the nutrition is. <laughs> So that's just a short video on how to think about the dosage of how much fish oil you should take. And obviously you gotta figure out for yourself. There's some more links in here to research and you can read more about some of the benefits, but basically the benefits are everything. If you can improve your omega-3 to omega-6 ratio and bring down your omega-6 by comparison, right? You should be bringing down your omega-6 anyways because you should be staying away from the, the processed foods and the seed oils and the vegetable oils. Yes, do that, don't eat that stuff. 
right? Then you should also be increasing the omega-3 because a lot of the foods that you might be eating, like let's say even the chicken that you think is healthy is actually omega-6 predominant. You need that fatty, wild-caught salmon, the shellfish, oysters, sardines, grass-fed beef, venison, elk. You need a lot of those uh, less popular but highly nutritious foods because that is what's most natural to human biology. It's what our ancestors have lived on for hundreds of thousands of years. That's short video. Hope you got some value out of this. If you have any questions or comments, you can always send us an email. Uh, me, me particularly, Colin at wildfoods.co. That's one L. And you can get the amazing wild fish oil, which I recommend you do, over at wildfoods.co. Use code YouTube. Either YouTube or YouTube 12. I got to check that again. I got to fix that. I'm pretty sure it's YouTube 2. I think it's just YouTube. Let's just do YouTube. How about that? YouTube for 12% off your entire order. I'll see you in the next one.